Good afternoon, Agency Overdrive members. Uh, there is popular demand to launch into a series of lectures about starting the agency, getting clients. In fact, I recorded a live video at some point earlier this week that sort of touched upon the idea and the starting uh, foundation of building an agency, of getting clients. But I realized that it's a really complicated topic. There's a lot more going on. And I think it would be a great Agency Overdrive series of lectures where I literally give you a review and strategy template based on my experience starting at Venture Media. Um, we started from nothing. I started from nothing. I started in a uh, recliner in my one bedroom apartment. And um, we, we're not a huge company. We're still a small company, but we've had growth each year. Uh, we've been in business five years now or so, five, six years. And um, six years, I guess. We did around $4 million of revenue in 2019, uh, hoping to continue to grow into 2020. Uh, it's a great journey. It's a really tough, it's tough, uh, but it can be very rewarding and you need to know how to start. And there are no shortcuts, at least not ones that I'm aware of. Um, I certainly didn't take any shortcuts. I don't know how to teach any shortcuts. And it's like, um, it's one of those things that there's a formula to it if you understand that formula. So I would, I, I've been thinking about these ideas and these concepts and organizing them into thoughts. And I'm packaging them now into a series of lectures that will hopefully help you basically spit, build your business and get clients. So in the first uh, series today, we're going to start about we're going to start with uh, defining who you are, like what kind of business you want to be. I'll get to that in a second, and getting your very first jobs before you spend a penny on advertising, before you start trying to um, go get larger clients. Um, the basic foundation of how you need to begin, and I like to begin with, or I think you should begin with defining who you are, what kind of business you want to be. Basically, do you want to be an agency or do you want to be a freelancer? And they're two very different things. There's no wrong answer. Um, you can make a lot of money and have a great career as a freelancer. You can make a lot of money and have a great career as an agency. But depending on how you define yourself, everything else that follows from here on out is going to change. For example, it's going to impact the type of reviews you get. It's going to impact the type of case studies you want to write. Um, it's going to impact how you structure your website, how you look for clients, the type of clients you want to sign, the type of service you're going to provide. So if you're going to be a freelancer, you need to, you want to um, identify yourself to your prospective clients as such. And there are certain, uh, there are certain advantages to hiring a freelancer. The costs are typically lower. Um, you're working on smaller projects where oftentimes a very small client who you could make a few thousand dollars a month off of might say like, oh, you're an agency, you have so many other clients, you have so many other people, I like you, I don't want, I want to work with you directly, et cetera, et cetera. Like, but with, as a freelancer, okay, you're working with me. I, you know, there's no complications. Um, there's, and, and you have to, you have to be transparent about that if you're going to be a freelancer, right? If you want to build an agency, that's no, there's nothing wrong. You should identify yourself as an agency even when you're one person. But your aim is to build an agency or a team. But you don't have to be a big agency. You're maybe you're a small agency. Maybe you're five, six, seven, eight, nine people, whatever it may be. Um, but like we're a small agency. That's exactly who we are. We're a small agency. We're about twenty people. Um, we're looking to grow, but we certainly identify ourselves as an agency and clients want to hire us because we're an agency. And the advantages of being an agency is uh, you feel like you're more established, you're maybe getting, you as a prospective client, you feel like you're getting um, a greater range of expertise and experiences. You have more access to Google Teams and, and different skill sets. Um, and you're willing to pay a bit of a higher cost to work with an agency. And then again, how you develop your website, the case studies, how do you how you refer to yourself? Just as simple as saying either the word I or we. When you're talking to a when I'm talking to a prospect, I always use the word we because I'm referencing our company. When I talk if you're an, a freelancer building your brand as a freelancer, you're talking to an agency, you're gonna use the word I to refer to yourself. I am going to help you with this, I'm going to deliver this. And there's nothing, there's no wrong uh, right or wrong answer. I think 
it's probably a little bit harder to build an agency or to identify yourself as an agency from the get-go. You're gonna need to go further and harder with the uh, trust factors, the portfolio factors, the case studies, the client reviews, then you'll have to go as, an, as a freelancer. Um, but that's okay. I do think it's a little bit harder. I think it's easier to start building your career as a freelancer. Um, and then you could always switch. Listen, you could switch. You could go, you could switch from an agency to a freelancer. You could switch to a freelancer to an agency. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to start, the first step is like, how are you gonna begin? Because your very first website, your online presence, your Facebook page, your Google Plus page, your Instagram posts and your Twitter posts, they're going to reflect who you are as a company. And you're going to, you can't attract all the people. So people coming to Google, looking to hire a freelancer or looking to hire an agency, they typically have their mind made up already. A brand looking for, an, a brand looking for help is, in most cases has their mind made up whether or not they're willing to work with a freelancer, an individual, or are they, or they wanna work um, with, with an agency. So I have a screenshot here on the right of somebody who's a freelancer and, his, and as you could tell, his website, I'm not saying it's this aesthetically very pleasing, the production value is pretty low, but he makes a very good case to hiring a freelancer. I will increase your AdWords traffic, I, any conversions for less than you're spending now, and that includes my fee. Okay, so right off the bat, you know you're working with a one person. So a large multinational company is not gonna hire him. But a small, but he might have the capacity to take on a lot of smaller clients that require less time on, an, on a day-to-day -day basis, on a month-to-month -month basis. And he can make a, a great living uh, doing that and it can be very re rewarding where he has no employees to have to pay taxes on. I mean, there's a lot of disadvantages that come with an agency. Um, there's a lot of difficulty, you know, uh, paying employees, paying contractors, paying commissions, infrastructure, rent, it's, it's a huge undertaking. Um, but here's what you should not do. You should not pretend to be an agency if you're a freelancer. That's a big mistake. That's how a lot of people fail because clients could see right through it. Um, clients could see right through that. When I started, I identified ourselves as an agency and I went through the process that I'm going to describe to give enough validity to who I was even before my first employee. Um, but very shortly after I started, I had one full-time remote employee, then two, and then a couple full-time employees here. And then at that point, you could be an agency because you could use we, there's different people they talk to, a client talks to, whatever. So that's totally fine. But don't be a freelancer and pretend you're an agency. It will not work. It will not work. If you're going to be a freelancer, if you're going to be the only one doing the work, um, then that's who you should be. Again, it's okay to build a website with an as an as an agency profile, and I'm, and I'm going to walk you through this process. And shortly thereafter, you're going to begin to hire people, whether they're remote or, or they're in-house. Um, but for now, you know you got to really be honest because there's nothing wrong. Like I said you're going to appeal to a lot of people who specifically are looking for freelancers, are looking for individuals who they can work directly with where there's less overhead. I have to charge my clients more because I have to pay for rent, I have to pay employee taxes, I have to pay insurance, I have to pay benefits, I have to pay health insurance. You know, there's a lot of things that go into running a company and you need to chart, you, you gotta, you gotta um, earn that revenue somehow. So a great advantage, but a lot of people are looking for a freelancer. And again, a lot of people are looking for agencies. It all depends on what you want, what type of life you want, what type of uh, career you want. Personally, I don't want the freelancer life because I need person-to-person -person interaction. I need to be on a day-to-day -day basis interacting with multiple people in a team setting, around a conference room table. Uh, I need that. I can, I can, my, psychologically, I'm not built to be a freelancer, sort of going, place to place, working at home, working remotely. I need the structure, I need the pressures, and I also need the other ancillary benefits that comes with having other people around. I just need that myself, personally. So that's a large reason of why I've decided to do what I, what I, what I do. If I psychologically was oriented towards being a freelancer um, and being very happy, I probably, would I probably would have chosen that lifestyle because it takes away a lot of the difficulties. But I don't know. Then again, there's there's the idea of having an agency, which is I could take a week off now and the company will still uh, survive and the clients will still be serviced. And that's a great thing too, like not having to do all the work myself or not having to do any specific client work myself. It took four years to get to that point, but 
now that I'm at that point, it's extremely rewarding. And that's an extremely sizable benefit of having an agency as well. Anyway, so uh, long story short, define who you are. It's very important. Decide what you want to be and write that down on paper. Make a commitment to it. Okay, that's step one. Step two is getting your first jobs. Okay, now this is difficult because it's daunting and it's overwhelming. The best advice I can give is, is don't think you're going to throw up a Wix site or a Squarespace site or a Weebly site or a WordPress site or a Webflow site and start running PPC campaigns, spending 20, 40, 60, 80 dollars a click, which is what your clicks are going to cost if you're in the PPC digital marketing space and start getting great clients. It's not going to happen. I've seen that fail over and over and over again. Over the last five years, students reaching out to me, looking at campaigns, even making this mistake myself, um, you're going to be out a lot of money really quick. It's not going to work. Just don't do it. In order to get your first jobs, and this is what I circle back to after I started running, I think I spent like two days running Google ads campaigns and seeing like I cannot afford, I couldn't even afford three clicks a day because the clicks were so expensive. I was like going deeply, deep into a hole. I spent a few thousand dollars that I didn't have on credit cards. And I was like, okay, this is not working. I got to do something else. So my first client was my friend's father, who's a dentist. My second client was my own father, who's a doctor. Um, my third client was a friend who had a online uh, clothing company. My fourth client was another friend who had a uh, law firm. My fifth client was a, another family friend that had a consulting firm. Okay, you get the picture. They're all friends or they're all family. Um, you got to go to your friends and family and start getting jobs through your friends and family. And they could be friends of friends, friends of family, family of family, whatever it may be. All right, that's what you need to do. Um, take the understanding and develop this mentality, and this might take time, because it all depends on how you feel about yourself. No job right now in your career, if you're just starting out, is beneath your dignity. No job is ever beneath your dignity. Now, you might get to a certain point and you're gonna, you will get to a certain point where certain jobs are not worth taking because you're making enough money, you're doing enough work for your clients that it doesn't make sense to take the job anymore. It's not beneath your dignity. But when, you're not, when you don't have any clients, there's no job beneath your dignity. There's no job beneath your pay grade. You take all the work you can get. And you have to go out and you have to be proactive. Um, secondly, don't, or thirdly, don't be afraid to work for free or at cost in the beginning, okay? There's nothing wrong. Don't think you're gonna like, don't be worried, oh, I'm gonna establish a name for myself that I work for free or that I'm so cheap. That's total um, procrastination, excuses, laziness, that will not happen. Work for free, work at cost. You, because the point of the work is not to get paid yet. It's not to be making a lot of money yet. The point now is to get experience, to make a lot of mistakes at, in a low risk environment and to most importantly, get reviews and case studies. That's what we're gonna talk about over the next few slides. Reviews and case studies. That is your sole focus, your number one, two, three, and four goal for this three to six month process of working for free, tapping your friends and family. Um, now, uh, don't pretend to be someone you're not in, in this context, right? If you're inexperienced and you haven't done this too much, then you're gonna go over to your friends, you're gonna go over to a family member, and you're gonna just say that outright, right? That's how you're gonna get the furthest, the fastest. Um, you'll go and you'll send an email, you make a phone call, and you'll say something like, uh, listen, I'm building my career as a freelancer, as an agency. Um, I'm gonna be helping companies with managing their pay-per-click campaigns or managing their Facebook campaigns or doing graphic design or doing SEO or doing conversion optimization, whatever your service is going to be. And that could change because you might be doing a range of services, you might be doing one service. Um, you say, I, listen, I know a lot about what I do. Uh, I know the subject matter really well, but in order to find new clients, I need a portfolio of reviews and projects. Um, you know, just like it is getting into design school. I know you're a, uh, a doctor, a retailer, a salesperson, you work at a law firm, um, you run your own um, interior design company. And I was hoping I could help you with a website, or I could help you with a landing page, I could help you with a, a, a campaign, I could help you even just design three different ad concepts for you free of charge, which you could use or not use. And all I'm asking for in exchange is a positive review on my Google, my Google business page um, and feedback that I could post on my site and on, on, on my Facebook and social media pages. 